Hello, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Joe Morano. I'm a wildlife photographer from Norfolk in the UK. And I recently went to RSPB Bempton Cliffs to do a bit of seabird photography. So here's how I got along. Me and my wife took a trip to RSPB Bempton Cliffs in Yorkshire. We stayed at the Haven, Fornwick Bay Haven, which is a fairly large campsite, quite close to Bempton itself. Now, what we actually did for the first time is we, we bought a really large tent, which made life very nice and comfortable. And we also paid slightly extra for the electric hookup. So we just bought an adapter, which meant that we could charge our cameras, mobiles, stuff like that. So that's definitely something that I would recommend. It's obviously a lot cheaper camping rather than staying in a hotel. And I would definitely, definitely do that again. So Bempton itself. Now I'd always seen Yorkshire. Um, I actually did my army infantry training in Yorkshire. So I'd always seen it as dark and dreary and miserable and rainy. If it ain't raining, it ain't training. I'd always seen it as just meh, but the views were absolutely stunning. And as someone that hasn't seen as much of his own country as he should have done, I don't think I was quite prepared for such gorgeous blue, crystal clear turquoise waters. The views and the cliffs, the grandeur, it was just absolutely, it's a stunning, absolutely stunning place. And I don't think I was quite ready for the sights and sounds and smells of um, half a million seabirds are actually at Bempton at the time of year that we went, it was just two weeks ago. And I don't think I was quite prepared for that. And it was incredible. So far, I'd go as far as saying, it is definitely the best RSPB reserve I've ever been to. So far, probably the best place I've been to do wildlife photography. I rate it that highly. So the cameras that I used on the trip, I used the Panasonic Lumix G80 with my 100 to 400 telephoto lens. And I also used my small Lumix GX80 with the 12 to 60 kit lens. Now the reason behind that was that in my mind, the G80 is a lot better for ergonomics. The 100 to 400 balance is a lot nicer. It's just the ergonomics of the G80 being a bigger camera it is a lot nicer than the GX80. And also the dual IS, you've got dual IS2 on the G80 and just dual IS on the GX80. And I have noticed a bit of a difference in the extra sort of stabilization the G80 has. The GX80 being small, light, portable, meant that I could just grab it out of my bag whenever I wanted to and 12 to 60, I mean, that's a 24 to 120 focal range, which you're not going super, super wide, but like I say, 24 mil full frame equivalent field of view is wide enough. And I was absolutely stunned. I was stunned at the, the lovely images that were coming out of the GX80 with basically what is a kit lens. Got some stunning, stunning landscape shots and I'm not a landscape shooter by any means. There is one area though that let me down and that was the autofocus on the G80. Now the autofocus is fast. It's one of the fastest autofocus systems you can get. It's brilliant for travel, street, portraits. It's brilliant for all that good stuff. But when it comes to birds in flight, the contrast detect system, at least in the G80, I found 49 autofocus points just isn't enough. At one point, just testing out the 49 area, I had a puffin right in the center of the frame using the 49 area focusing system and went to lock focus and boosh, focusing straight away on the background, completely ignoring the definitely contrasty puffin that was straight in the center of the frame. So pretty much the 49 area autofocus was useless what I, what I tended to do with the birds, I'd have a small sort of custom autofocus points, about nine autofocus points in the center of the frame. And I'd try and shoot the birds in flight like that. 
Now I did get some keepers. The main thing is I did get keepers. That is the main thing. When you go out, it doesn't matter if you've got 100 blurred shots, but you end up with 10 amazing keepers. But it was just frustrating at the time. Only getting maybe 25% of shots in focus is definitely frustrating. And that is why I definitely want to look into getting the Lumix G9. Um, my father-in-law's actually got that. I've seen firsthand just how much better the autofocus system is. I believe it's a 225 area, so you've got a lot more autofocus points. And the camera itself is a lot more powerful, it's a lot more modern. And from what I've seen, the autofocus system is pretty good. Either that or the Olympus EM1 Mark II. Now that's got the benefits of the contrast and the phase detection autofocus. That might help me out a little bit more for the birds in flight. But on the whole, the G80 was fantastic. Both cameras were fantastic for stills and video. They were just let down a little bit. They're both let down a little bit in 4K video by the autofocus, um, but they're the main, the main problem is just the autofocus for fast moving subjects in stills. The stabilization on them is amazing. When you think of it, it's incredible to be hand holding a lens that is giving you an 800 millimeter equivalent field of view. It is so liberating. Up on top of the cliffs, the wind was blowing and I was able to hand hold the camera in the wind with to be honest, no real difficulty whatsoever. No tripods, no monopods, just lovely, light, stable, handheld shooting, which I think is absolutely what you want. Now, as for Bempton itself, like I say, 500,000 seabirds, including puffins, razorbills, guillemots, gulls, <sighs> just the, the sights, the sounds, like I say, the smells, it was just, it's absolutely incredible and somewhere that I would absolutely definitely recommend to go. Now I did go two weeks ago, so I think most of the puffins are now headed off. They're on their way onwards and upwards. But what I found really difficult was, I know places like Scomer Island, you can get quite close to the puffins. I guess they're probably quite used to the photographers. At Bempton, they like to reside the puffins at least, like to reside at the bottom of the cliffs. So it was hard getting close up shots. Um, but thanks to a Nikon shooter, not that it matters that he shoots Nikon, I just noticed these things. Um, he actually pointed out to me and my wife um, a couple of puffins that were relatively nice and close. And I was able to get some really nice close up shots. I also thought it was nice in, in this day and age, we're so used to photographers just hiding and Try, almost trying to sabotage other photographers. It was nice to see someone say, hey, look, have you seen these? And I pretty much passed on that information to everyone I could see with a camera. So it's, it's just nice to see everyone helping each other out. That was, that was really nice to see. So the next day, we sort of tried to explore a bit more of the area away from the reserve. Because obviously there's cliffs that run, I think it's about five kilometers three, five miles, five kilometers all around the area. And we went to Thornwick Bay itself. Did actually get some nice shots of some of the seabirds, but I spent a lot of time um, just kind of brushing up on landscape photography. Because when you're in a lot of wildlife, it, well, when you're shooting wildlife, the two kind of go hand in hand a lot of the time. And definitely if you can't be shooting, an shooting if you can't be photographing animals, you can be getting shots of other things instead. So that was really good. On the whole, I absolutely had, excuse the pun, well, not really a whale of a time. There are whales there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely had a brilliant, brilliant time. I would totally recommend Bempton Cliffs to anyone that is thinking of going. Um, if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I always strive my best to get back to absolutely everyone. If you want to see more of my pictures, um, please visit, um, follow me on Instagram. Um, also, my website is joe-morano.com. Um, please feel free to check me out on there. And now what I'm going to do is show you all my favorite images that I took at Bempton, just to give you an idea of you know, what it's like and what's possible. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I will definitely see you on the next one. 
take care.